One of the most infamous killers of history is without a shadow of a doubt the Zodiac Killer, or as some people call him the American version of Jack the Ripper, because of the cruelty of his attacks and the fact that his identity is still to this day unknown. It all started on December 20th, 1969 at Lake Herman Road, Vallejo, California. A young couple, David Faraday and Ben Lee, Betty Lou Jensen, were at, love, were at Lover's Lane for their very first date before attending a Christmas concert. While the couple was in the car, a man approached him from the back, wielding a 22 caliber pistol, and started shooting. David was shot and Betty exited the car, attempting to flee, but the killer caught up with her and shot her with five bullets stitched across her back. Shortly after, police arrived in the scene after the couple was found by a person living nearby. David Faraday was bleeding intensely, while Betty Lou Jensen was dead. Police searched for clues on the scene, but came out empty-handed. Faraday himself wasn't able to provide any information and died upon arriving to the hospital. On July 4, 1969, another young couple, Michael Maggio and Darlene Farron, visited a lover's lane near Blue Rock Springs. After Darlene picked up Michael from his home with her car and drove off to the lover's lane, a mysterious car parked behind them, but left almost immediately. Soon afterwards, the car reappeared and stopped once again at the back of the couple's car. A figure approached the passenger side door. At that point, Michael thought that the man was some sort of local authority and reached for his wallet. But the figure started shooting at the couple with a flashlight attached to his 9mm Luger. After shooting, the man walked away from the car and then returned only to shoot again, focusing mainly on Darlene. After midnight, a call was made to the Vallejo Police Department. Vallejo Police Department. I want to report a double murder. May I have your if you name, go one mile east calling? on Columbus Parkway, the public park, go find kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. I also killed those kids last year. Good. The killer claimed responsibility for the past two shootings and then ended the call with a taunting goodbye. A public telephone was later found off the hook around the area. Police sped to the lover's lane and found the site of the attack. Farron died on her way to the hospital, but Majot survived. His survival, however, would not come in handy to the police until years later. On August 1, 1969, three newspapers, Vallejo Times Herald, San Francisco Chronicle and the San Francisco Examiner received a mysterious letter, double posted and marked Please Rush to Editor. The letters were apparently written by the killer of the attacks on December 1968 and July 1969. He proved his statements by providing proof such as the time of the attack and the equipment used. Along with that information, the killer also sent three parts of a cipher, each part was sent to the three newspapers. The killer claimed that once decoded, his identity would be revealed. The, the letters were signed with, a, with an overlined cross circle, with many, which many believe it represents a gun sign. The cipher sent had 8 lines and 17 symbols on it. The symbols varied from Greek letters, Norse code, to astrological signs and many more. The killer threatened the newspapers to publish his letters as well as his ciphers, otherwise he would kill a dozen people despite experts being unable to crack the ciphers. A high school teacher, along with his wife, were able to partially decipher the codes. The pattern was that since each symbol represented a letter, double symbols could represent words with double letter letters, and thus they came, they came up with the word kill, which does have a double letter, and following this formula, a message was at the very least partially discovered. I like killing people because it is so much fun. In the claim deciphered message, the killer did not reveal his identity, but rather his motive, which was fun, because apparently man is the most dangerous animal of all, and that he was collecting slaves for the afterlife once reborn in heaven. The same pattern could not be used to discover the message of the rest of the letters. On August 7, 1969, a letter was once again received offering details of the crimes once more, and the killer came, gave himself a name. Zodiac. Nearly two months later, on September 27, 1969, 
a couple, Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepherd, were having a picnic at the, at the shores of Lake Berryessa. At that evening, a man was apparently noticed by Cecilia, lurking around the scene and then approaching them with a gun. The man was wearing an executioner-like mask in the shape of a box. His eyes were covered by sunglasses and he was wearing a black t-shirt with a white overlined cross circle suit on it, along with it black trousers and black gloves. The man asked for their money and car keys and told them that he was an apparent escapee from a prison in Montana. The man then asked Cecilia to tie up Brian and he then tied up Cecilia, as well as Brian after realizing he was tied up loosely. After that, the killer started stabbing them both repeatedly, fled to their car and marked the dates of the previous two attacks of December and July as well as the current one by knife and once again signed with a crossed circle. The killer once again contacted the police for the, for the attack, claiming responsibility. Cecilia died due to the stabbings, but Brian broke free and managed to survive severely wounded, thanks to a man and his son who were fishing nearby. Police arrived on the scene, but Brian was unable to give them much information. Experts, however, did find clues, such as footprints belonging to a windwalker shoe, and they were able to estimate the weight of the man. Witness reports of a strange man walking around the lake that day also came forward. Two weeks later, on October 11, 1969, a cab driver, Paul Stein, picked up a fare. The passenger told him to drive him over to Washington and Maple Streets in Presidio Heights, but after passing over their destination, the passenger shot Paul Stein from the passenger seat, killing him instantly. The killer then went over to the driver's seat, stealing Stein's wallet, car keys, as well as a piece of his shirt. Gloves were left on the scene, presumably belonging to the killer, and eyewitnesses from across the road gave a description of the crime. The man was apparently seen cleaning the inside of a car, and his description was brought forward, imaging a young man stocky with a crew cut and a pair of horn-rimmed glasses. A man fitting that description was spotted by a patrol car, but he was never questioned, because at the time the attacker was described as a young black male. It is very possible that was Zodiac. The man was apparently seen lumbering around close to the crime scene wearing a black jacket, which could have been covered from the inside with blood. A few days later, a letter was once again received by the Chronicle. The Zodiac took credit for the attack, offering a blood-stained piece of Stein's shirt to prove his statements, and taunted the police he claimed could have caught him last night had they searched the site properly. The Zodiac then threatened to kill schoolchildren and even offered a sketch of how to do so in his letter that however never happened. A sketch based on the killer's appearance was made and the letters written by the Zodiac continued in the same manner as the previous ones. However, the people that Zodiac claimed he had killed continued to rise with the police being unable to link them conclusively to any crime. The Zodiac Killer, in his exorcist letter, sent in January 1974, raised the number of his victims as high as 37. The letter had a strange sign on it. Whether it has a meaning or not is unknown. Despite the police being unable to find all 37 murders, there were some attacks which could be linked to the Zodiac. On March 20, 1970, Kathleen Johns and her baby daughter were stopped by a man who was apparently trying to warn them about their car's tire and offered to help them. After doing so and driving, Kathleen's car tire rolled off and the man offered to drive them to a service station, but after they entered the man's car, they were threatened by the driver who told Jones that he would kill her and then throw her baby out of the window. Jones somehow managed to escape and hide from the man in the bushes. After the man left, she reached the police department and she identified the man in the sketches, meaning the Zodiac killer, as her attacker. Zodiac himself took credit from the crime. Her story was controversial and Zodiac didn't give much details of the crime 
as he used to in his letters. On October 30, 1966, a young student, Jerry Jo Bates, was found dead in Riverside, California, close to the library. Her body showed signs of stabbings and brutal beating. Next to her was a man's wristwatch, stopped at 1223, yet the attack, according to experts, occurred much earlier. Neighbors heard her scream at around 10.30 p.m. The victim was a student at the area, and close to the victim were shoe prints, similar to the ones used by Zodiac. In one of his letters, the Zodiac indirectly claimed responsibility for the murder. The police and parents of Cherry Joe Bates all received a mysterious letter shortly after the attack, which had the words, Bates had to die, there will be more. The letter was apparently signed with a weird symbol, said to be the letter Z, which could stand for Zodiac. A janitor of the school that Cherry was attending found a chilling piece of evidence, a carved student desk with a morbid poem that could describe the attack of the Bates was found at school. The writings are said not only to match the letters sent to the parents, but also the ones by the Zodiac Killer. A typed letter which also offered details of the crime titled, The Confession, was sent to the police department, but it is not known if it's linked to the killer. On September 6, 1970, Donna Lass went missing. She was working as a, as a nurse and a call was made from an unknown male voice to her employer, stating that Lass would leave for a family emergency. The call was a hoax. Nothing solidly links Lass's disappearance with the Zodiac. She was lingering, however, near the site of Paul Stein's murder scene, and interestingly enough, a postcard was supposedly sent by the Zodiac, where it was implied that Lass was killed by him. The site at the postcard has been investigated, and a pair of sunglasses were discovered similar to the ones at, lake, at the Lake Berryessa attack, along with a cross circle made of rocks. Recent evidence claims the postcard to be a forgery, and the actual killer of Dona Lass is unknown. Three years prior to Zodiac's first attack, on June 4, 1963, a young couple, Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards, were found murdered at Santa Barbara, California. They were shot by a 22 caliber rifle. The couple were students and were celebrating an annual school event at the, a remote area of the beach. While sunbathing, the killer apparently forced Linda to bind Robert at, at gunpoint and then they attempted to flee. The killer shot them and then dragged their bodies to a nearby empty shack. The killer placed Linda on top of Robert and cut open her bathing suit exposing her breasts, possibly with a knife. The killer tried to set the shack on fire with matches but to no avail. The ammunition and method of the attack are strikingly similar to the ones used by the Zodiac, but there is no conclusive evidence that the Zodiac killer was behind the attack. Despite many evidence and eyewitnesses, no person was able to identify the killer, but there are many suspects such as Richard Gajowski, Rick Marshall, Larry Kane and many more. A man was even recently found in a photo with Darlene Farron who has a remarkable resemblance to the Zodiac, but till to this day he's unknown. Arthur Lee Allen is, however, the biggest suspect. Born in 1933, Allen was brought forward as a suspect due to a friend of his called Don Cheney. Cheney claims that Allen expressed once his desire to kill people, children in particular, after being fired from his job as a teacher because he was allegedly seen molesting them. Cheney claims that Allen expressed interest in killing with a flashlight, hunt down couples, and taunt the police through letters afterwards. He even claims that Allen would call himself Zodiac, and that he would change his appearance while committing the crimes. Allen was also in the Navy and had a pretty high intelligence, similar to the one Zodiac showcased. This may all seem pretty good to be true, but Don Cheney contacted the police when Zodiac first made his name public prior to the police asking for witnesses to visit the police departments. More evidence regarding Allen were found. He was apparently a student at Riverside during the time that Cherry Jo Bates was murdered. He knew Darlene, and a, re and a relative of Darlene claimed that she knew a man called Lee. He also lived pretty close to the two sides of the first two confirmed Zodiac attacks. During an interview with Allen, investigators found even more bizarre links to the Zodiac killings. 
Alan was wearing a wristwatch with a cross circle as a symbol, and the name Zodiac below it. He claims it was given to him by his mother as a Christmas gift. He also said that his favorite book is The Most Dangerous Game, a story about a man who kills young couples in the woods for fun, similar to, to what was found in the deciphered message of Zodiac's letters. Alan even stated that he visited Lake Berryessa for scuba diving, and he was carrying bloody knives at the day of the attack of Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepherd. Alan, though, claims that they were used to cut open chickens for a nearby barbecue at the lake, along with others. A search warning was then conducted on his trailer, and even more clues emerged. Black jackets, gloves, and guns were found. The size of the clothing was identical to the one used by the Zodiac and his shoes also were the same size with the Zodiacs. The guns were also similar to the ones used by the Zodiac on his attacks. Signs of a demented personality were also discovered, such as sexual devices, ro rodents that were cut open, pipe bombs and knives covered in blood. But no conclusive evidence was found, such as Paul Stein's shirt. However, due to the evidence, a DNA test was made, Police were able to come across a bloody fingerprint at Paul Stein's crime scene, but it's not 100% sure that it belongs to the killer, although it is pretty likely. The DNA test was negative, and a writing comparison test was also conducted. Alan wrote with both hands, but he didn't match the killer's writings. Alan was at this point considered clear, but interestingly enough, he was in prison in 1975 and once released, a mysterious Zodiac letter was received in 1978, four years after his so-called exorcist letter, and a couple of months after Allen's release from prison. The link, however, between Arthur Lee Allen and the Zodiac doesn't stop there. In July 1992, Michael Mijot, the only surviving confirmed Zodiac victim, was asked to identify his attacker from a photo lineup which included several suspects. Majot eventually identified Allen as his attacker with certainty. A month later, Arthur Lee Allen, who had denied being the killer, died on August 26, 1992, due to diabetes and heart problems he was suffering from. So, still to this day, the Zodiac's identity is unknown, and we don't even know whether more than one were involved in the killings. The case has in recent years reopened and the investigation is still going.